but they're going to have a people's approach. Agriculture also has really linked it to the need for us to work together so that at least jobs can be created. Over to you, Professor. Well, thank you very much. Um, may I join the um, moderator and invite you to uh, applaud these two brilliant presentations first. I think having listened to these two speakers and having read the report um, and all the good ideas I find in this report, I think I find myself in a position of the elephant who has just swallowed five big pieces of coconut and is not quite sure how she's going to digest them. Uh, I feel inspired, but I'm not quite sure how we're going to digest all the wisdom, all the information that we have, and how we can achieve all the goals that we have from one to five. And so the question that I'm going to address uh, in my remarks is to think of, to raise the fundamental question that is central to this panel is, can we truly meet all these five goals without leaving no one behind? Or are we just deluding ourselves? And my answer is going to be that we can. We can if we get, use a lot of data. We're going to need a lot of data. We're going to need a lot of science. But most importantly, we are going to need a lot of wisdom. And there are a few principles, a few basic principles that we are going to um, think about that I'm going to invite you to think about. And they're really drawn from basic African wisdom. The first principle is what we might call, if we want to be scientific, uh, the principle of co-benefits, which means not tackling one goal at a time, but think about how the goals help each other. Uh, in good old times, we used to think about this in terms of having one goal scratch the back of one goal and then the other goal scratching the back of the first goal in return. And so co-benefits are going to be important to keep in mind. The second principle is to think about systems as opposed to individual goals and targets. And then the, sp the second speaker spoke to this very well when he spoke about agriculture. It's not just about nutrition. It's about how we use that as a template, as an entry point to address questions of health, questions of gender, questions of infrastructure, questions of inequality, uh, questions of environment. And so think about systems as opposed to individual discrete targets. A third principle that I would like us to think about is the principle of collective action. And if you are, uh, know Swahili, this is a principle of the Harambe. Who are we working? for and who is going to do the work and as we work on SDG one through five we have to keep in mind that we are working for the people that this work is going to have to be done by the people and it's going to be done if we invest in the people and so investing in the people is going to be a very central key message so this is a people-centered agenda, as the first speaker said. And so since this is a people-centered agenda, it makes sense that we pay attention to the science of people, which is the science of demography. If we pay attention to demography, we can actually learn one thing of two about how to harness the power of people to serve people. And there are three complementary parts to demography. The first part in demography is focused on the big picture. This is the piece that focuses on population size, how many of us we are. Again, the first speaker draw attention to the large numbers, 1.3 over 1.3 billion today, projected to be nearly 1.7 by the turn of the century. So these are the people that need to be served, that need to be housed, fed, clothes, transported, etc. Again, an African proverb says, uh, I think it's a turtle who says this, you can only hang your hat or hang your bag as high as your shoulder is. In other words, we have to keep in mind the mouse that we feed and be uh, cognizant of the number of mouths that we have to feed and keep feeding. 
A second piece of demography is going to focus away from the big picture and look at a sort of smart, uh, finer picture. And here, this picture, or this part of demography is not just about population size, but also the population composition, the composition of the population. People are not just mouths to feed, they're also hands that are going to work. And here we pay attention to a structure and it turns out that African countries, most African countries are now at a stage where they go through a demographic change in which we're going to have more and more hands, robust young hands that are ready to work. And if we invest in those hands, we can actually achieve all the five goals that we have here and more. And so the key is to make strategic investment in these young hands that are ready to work. So the first piece is population size. The second piece is population structure and age composition. The first part of demography focuses on even the tinier picture. And this is what they, they call the life course. Or if you've seen the Lion King movie, is what is called the cycle of life, the circle of life. From birth to death and all the stages in between. Watching as people are born, survive the first age, go through childhood, enter school, leave school, enter the world of work, get married, become parents, retire, and die. And so we have to think about all these stages and how they link together and how they feed each other, how they support each other. And so that science that focuses on the um, life course is going to say, well, it's not enough to have many hands to work. These hands are going to work, and they're going to work more effectively if they have been prepared to be, to be productive. And so here you have to think about education systems. And I note that I didn't say schooling system, it's education systems. You have to think about education systems and the transition from school to work to prepare these hands to be able to work and help us achieve goals one through five. By investing on those hands, you can actually achieve a lot. You can actually make this young generation of adolescents and young adults better able to fill the jobs that exist, become more productive in these jobs, create new jobs, be able to take advantage of the mega trends that you see in the world. And these young cohort of adolescents and young adults are not just going to work for themselves. They are going to support the elderly, they are going to support some of the older workers and help them enter the digital generation. They are going to support the younger generation and improve the education and the nurturing and the uh, feeding and the health of the young, younger generation. And they're going to be the parents of tomorrow. And so the investments in this young generation are going to be critical in us achieving all our SDGs. For those of you who have seen the movie, The Lion King, the king lion, Mufasa, didn't just took a lot of time preparing the young Simba to become king. It took a lot of effort. It took a lot of nurturing. It took, it took a lot of education. And yesterday, you saw the president of Zimbabwe essentially do the same. Praise the young people who were here, uh, encouraging them to take on leadership, preparing them for tomorrow. Essentially, what the president did yesterday, what the Lion King did in the movie is what African countries should do as a whole. We should today start preparing this generation. And preparing doesn't mean just quality education, as uh, my colleague said. It's also about the broader education, citizenship education, helping them become leaders, uh, helping them provide for communities, helping them become better person, helping them plan their future as well as the future of their families. And if we do this nurturing, if we cultivate this generation, then we are on the path, on the road to achieving all of our five and more SDGs. Thank you. Um, that's brilliant because we have really built the linkages looking at the life cycle approach. Um, and I, I, I keep uh, the different pictures that we should bear in mind and the nurturing. That's so very important. Um, now, let me turn my attention to...